just like the title says, I actually just don't code anymore. I don't make websites. I don't make mobile apps. That's it. All right, that's the video. I don't gotta do this anymore. Just kidding. I have some explanations as to why I don't really code as much, but all jokes aside, I still do code a little bit, but it's not as much as I did before. I did a video previously on this explaining my journey from going unemployed to being a developer advocate now. I'll put the link up here somewhere, wherever you can click it to go watch that video. I explained it live on stream. Also, if you're not following me on Twitch, you should definitely follow me. I build a bunch of projects, try to teach a couple concepts and do a bunch of other things on Twitch as well. So the link will be in the description if you want to check me out there. But so with being a developer advocate at Airbyte, which is the company I work for now, the focus is very, very different. And what do I mean by that? So previously, before I was even working at Airbyte, or even before I was doing developer advocacy or developer relations, I was building mobile apps. I was building websites, very, very front end focused. I was doing a lot of JavaScript. I was doing a lot of React, React Native, things like that. And now being a developer advocate doesn't necessarily mean that I'm not front end focused, but at the company I'm at now, we're focused more on data engineering and data analytics, really just the data ecosystem in general. And so with that comes the challenge of learning data engineering, data analytics, all the different tools, including our own, that come with that. And honestly, I've got to say, it's both fun and challenging at the very same time. When I was interviewing for Airbytes, I had to really sit down with myself and think, is this what I want to do? I'm moving away from what I'm comfortable with. I'm moving away from JavaScript. I'm moving away from being able to build demos and websites or mobile apps and really, really show you as the viewer, this is what you can build or this is what you can do with this product or with this technology. To now shifting over to data where a lot of the stuff that happens is kind of behind the scenes. You don't really see the work that a data engineer does unless you're in that role, unless you're a data analyst, a scientist, a data engineer. Your work is hidden behind what us as consumers really see. And that in and of itself has been very difficult when we're talking about the context of being a developer advocate. You're used to seeing these people, James Quick, James Perkins, Danny Thompson, the list goes on of other developer advocates that do amazing work that you see all the time. And you're it's easy to put into context and to visualize what it is they're doing because it's easy to put that stuff on a YouTube video. And I love their work, I really, really do. It's amazing, it's inspiring. It's what really propelled me to become a developer advocate is that's the work I wanna do. I'm doing YouTube, I'm doing Twitch, making content in general. I'd love to do that as a full-time job, but now the challenge is to do that for an industry that is lacking in that kind of content. And by lacking, I mean lacking creative content, lacking in the flair that the front end world sees. Data engineering, you know, SQL and all that other stuff can be very dull at times. I mean, I implore you to go find a video or something in the realm of data analytics or data engineering that is fun and exciting. I doubt you're able to find anything like that. And then there lies the objective, the goal, the mission that we have as developer advocates at Airbyte is can we be the people to make that fun, to make it exciting, to spruce it up a little bit. And I think that's why I really chose this role. I chose the challenge to stray away from what I'm comfortable with, to move into something I'm less comfortable with, to challenge myself and to really see if I can do this. Can I learn something new, new technologies? I've had to learn Python, I've had to learn SQL, I've had to really put more efforts into learning Kubernetes and Docker, and all these other different tools that flow in the data ecosystem and kind of run the modern data stack as we as we call it in the, in the ecosystem, to be able to create creative, fun, entertaining content on. If I were to have joined a company that was doing more stuff in JavaScript or anything in the front end Jamstack realm, I feel I would have been very good and confident in my skills to create content in a very fast pace. But now on this end of the token, I don't know if I can. That's kind of the, the challenge I want to bring onto myself 
And what I've been trying to do as of late is find my role, find my image, find what it is that I can bring from this side over here and really just put data engineering, data analytics, data science, and all the tools that go with it on the map, put it on Twitter, put it on YouTube, put it on Twitch and really make it known. I feel that on Twitch, a lot of people have actually been coming out as data engineers and data scientists are really people that have just been working with this kind of stuff and been helping me find that direction. I think it's been very, very cool to see the interest that has been spawning in that topic. And that's just something that I've wanted to talk about today is what it is I am doing currently. This YouTube channel has been through ebbs and flows in terms of what kind of content is happening right now. I'm doing a lot of tech. I'm doing a lot of my journey. It started out as just documenting my journey and it's been a little bit of a variety channel now. That's what I'm gonna keep it at. I'm still gonna be doing content on my journey. I wanna bring you guys along. I know a lot of people are curious and a lot of people want insights on what it is I'm doing to potentially help themselves in their journey and that's perfectly fine. I still wanna do that content. I'm still also going to be doing content on tech reviews and new tech that I'm going to be reviewing and things like that. So. This channel is just going to be variety. That's what I want it to be. And that's what it's going to be. But hopefully that kind of brought everyone up to speed in terms of what it is I'm doing. No, I'm not stopping any code. I'm still working on my side project Toodaloo, which you guys can check out on Twitch that I'm actively building. Still building that mobile app. I'd love to still work on front end slash web dev stuff. I have some partnerships and things like that in the works, but I'm also going to be doing more stuff on the data engineering side and bringing you all along as well to kind of expose you to that world. I know there's a lot of people that are new to engineering slash programming still and don't know which way to go. I'd love to tackle the front end side and now the data engineering side and see which one not benefits you, but interests you most. I think you should go towards what interests you most instead of what benefits you most. Yes, a job may pay you more money, but is it really going to satisfy you and make you happy? You don't want to work a full-time job that really doesn't bring you happiness and ultimately ends up making you hate life and, and your job and then trickles down into other aspects of your life. So you don't want that. You definitely don't want that. So this is the beginning of our data engineering journey. I'm gonna be doing more content on that here as well on YouTube. I'm doing more content on the Airbyte channel as well on my Twitch too. So stay tuned for all that content, but thank you guys for watching the video. I'm happy to bring you along and I'm happy to be just doing more technical content. It's been a lot of fun learning data and all the different tools. So hopefully we can bring more of that stuff to you. But anyways, thank you for watching the YouTube video. Hit that like button and subscribe. You know what to do. And I'll see you all on the next video. Peace.